We think of New Zealand as a land of birds. But other warm-blooded creatures have made this land their home. One such presence has now returned to our shores after a long absence. This sea lion is the first female to have settled on a mainland beach in recorded history. It now seems possible that the actions of this single animal may have improved the fate of her troubled species. Scientist Sean McConkie has devoted the last eight years to researching the New Zealand sea lion and its recent return to the mainland. Sea lions first started turning uh, up on the mainland again uh, around about 30 years ago. They've increased in number steadily since then. When I first started in 1994, there were probably about 40 to 50 sea lions on the mainland, uh, and the population has doubled uh, in the eight years since then. Sean's video ID work helps him to recognise the different sea lions on Otago's beaches. The basis of the research that we're doing at the moment uh, is identifying individual animals using natural scars that they already possess on their flippers, on their body, on their face. By using those natural marks, we're able to follow those individuals, we're able to look at their movements, uh, figure out what beaches they're using, how long they're here for, whether it's the same animals year after year, uh, or whether we're getting new animals turning up all the time. Males are much larger than females, can get up to about 400 kilograms, uh, and they tend to be much more aggressive than the females as well. So uh, males will get up and roar at you, threaten you. Nearly all the sea lions now residing on the mainland are males. But in 1993, a single female arrived and gave birth on this beach. She became known simply as mum. Females typically uh, return to the same place that they were born in order to breed. Uh, so because most of them have been born in the subantarctic islands, that's where they'll return to for breeding. Uh, mum, on the other hand, arrived here. Uh, that's something not many females have done. Uh, and what's extremely unusual about mum is that she actually stayed here, started breeding here, and has remained here ever since. Until recently, the only evidence that sea lions ever lived on our coasts was their bones. Anthropologist Ian Smith has scoured mainland beaches for these bones to find clues to their history. I was able to show that there were bones of female sea lions in some of the sites that uh, we had investigated. And this is fairly good evidence that there were breeding populations in those areas. The Maori people hunted sea lions for food, um, and as a result of this hunting, the sea lion population retreated southward during the course of human occupation. Sea lions disappear from the North Island by about 1500 AD, and from the uh, Otago area by about 1750 AD. I think it's vitally important that this species uh, recolonizes the New Zealand mainland and establishes viable breeding colonies here. One of those responsible for the welfare of the new arrivals is Department of Conservation Officer Steve Brony. I see it's a, it's a Taonga species really. To me this is this is the marine mammal equivalent of the Kakapo as far as New Zealand is concerned and that's that's the way I would encourage the public to look on it. Most of them are, are congregated down in three breeding sites in the subantarctic where we've already had a big scare with a, you know, a mystery disease that, that badly affected pup recruitment quite a number of years ago. You've got interaction with the fishery, 
but it's causing quite a bit of concern. They're internationally recognised as being the rarest sea lion in the world. Um, and now what we've got here, of course, is mainland breeding. So, you know, it makes it a very special place we've got here. No one knows why the sea lions chose now to come back, but the event may be vital for their long-term survival. The New Zealand sea lion at the moment is considered threatened due to the low number of breeding colonies. So the establishment of a breeding colony here on the mainland is quite important for the welfare of the species. Uh, and so I'm quite interested in finding out what's unique about this area, what's unique about these animals, uh, and what we can do to ensure that this breeding colony does become established here. While this colony began with Mum's unusual behaviour, Chance has also had a role to play. Mum's first three pups were uh, all females. They've all started to breed, so that makes Mum a grandmother, I guess. Uh, and hopefully all things going well, fairly shortly she may well be a great-grandmother. Unlike the males, female sea lions are typically placid by nature, only becoming aggressive if their pup's safety is threatened. The mothers must divide their time between long fishing forays and nursing their pups. Mum's daughter Leone is this year suckling a valuable female pup. But Leone and her daughter arrived here only with the help of some very concerned people. Uh, unfortunately this year Leone gave birth at quite a public beach. Uh, we've had pups attacked by dogs before. So uh, along with Doc we decided that we would shift her to a more secluded beach uh, and in order to do this we had to first of all catch her in a net we then had to sedate her uh, and then she had to be transported by vehicle to this new location. It had never been done before um, and it was quite a, uh, an involved operation involving vets from Massey uh, and a local vet who specialises in deer and we would probably do it again because the pups are so valuable. While the pups are still young and vulnerable, Sean enlists the help of visiting students. Miley Merrigan has come to watch and study them for the next month. Well, I live on the bus because it's the closest I can get to the beach, and um, I paddle over every morning. I have no electricity, I have no bathroom facilities at all. I wanted to study the sea lions cause, just because they're so interesting. Um, they're interesting to look at, they're interesting what they're doing, and they're, the fact that they're here at Otago is just amazingly unique. Well, I'm looking at basically um, how they spend their time, how the pups allocate what they're doing, and the differences in personalities between the different pups and the way that their mothers take care of them. Um, because they all, have, they all have such distinct characters and it, it influences you know, their survival. The females have learned to adapt to the changes that have occurred to mainland beaches. Plantation pines are now used instead of native forest for protection. Um, females often lead their pups uh, up into the sand dunes and sometimes through into the pine trees. Uh, we think it's to try and get away from the worst of the weather and also to get away from aggressive males. Uh, unfortunately it's not 100% successful. Sometimes males do follow the females and their pups back into the trees. The males, if they even see the pup, they instantly go into herding behavior and they just think, this pup is mine. <coughs> they basically deprive it of all free will and just herd it around and it's horrible. The males just harass them indefinitely and will um, you know, lessen the time that the mother actually gets to spend with the pup and that can be really detrimental. The pups grow quickly, and by four months of age, Mum's son has already molted his brown coat. Mum can be quite capable of repelling the attention of young males. Mum is definitely the best mother. Um, she's around the most. She protects the pups 
aggressively, which Sean says is real, um, <coughs> like atypical of them. She just, she'll roar, she'll bite, she'll even draw blood if the males are trying to um, harass her pup. But like all female sea lions, she must leave her pup undefended in order to feed. It's during this time that the pups are in greatest danger. Pups are quite uh, vulnerable to a number of different things, particularly to males which may harass or potentially even kill them. Here on the mainland, pups are vulnerable to other things such as people and even people's pets. Uh, we have had a number of sea lions attacked by dogs uh, and we've also had sea lions clubbed to death, shot and even rammed by cars. A couple of years ago, of course, we lost one of mum's pups at Blackhead Beach. It looked very safe where it was situated, under good cover, well off the beach. But two days later, it just had completely vanished. Mum was seen coming ashore, um, calling for it, and with no idea what happened. There's all sorts of speculation. It may have been taken by a dog, and, or it may have been lifted by someone. We have had instances of individuals taking fur seal pups home Naturally bold, the pups are already as fearless as the adults. Leonie's pup, Lorelei, that's what I've named her, she's, um, she's got a real attitude. She'll start traveling off on her own and Leonie will call, you know, as in trying to locate her, where are you, I've lost you, and she will ignore her mother and she'll just sneak off, she'll just run off in her own little direction and go to the inlet and play or whatever. Mum's boy pup, now slightly larger than Lorelei, has also made an impression. I named him Connor because he's chubby and my brother's name's Connor and he was a chubby baby. And um, he's by far my favourite just because he's the most adventurous. And for a young sea lion, there's no greater adventure than the water. scientific and say they're interacting with inanimate objects, but they play. They play with seaweed, they play with dead fish, they play with pine cones, they play with little sticks, and um, they'll just get so excited and they'll nose it around and tug on it and play it with for so long. It's great. Water may be a sea lion's favourite environment, but it can also be where they come into greatest conflict with people. Over a hundred sea lions are drowned in squid nets every year. New Zealand sea lion might be the, the rarest in the world, but it's not universally loved to the same way that a kakapo is. You know, yet recreational fishers um, have very strong feelings about sea lions. Some local sea lions have now learned to swim up rivers to hunt for salmon. While most fishermen tolerate them, at least one sea lion has been shot. Recreational fishers have to be reminded at times, you know, that they have a right to try and catch a fish. Right? The fish aren't there. There's a number of times that they've phoned me up or even said to me, you know, when are you going to do something about the sea lions because they're eating our fish? Right? Where the our fish came from, I find is really bizarre. Um, we fish for recreation, for sport. We don't starve if we don't get a salmon or a green bone. They do. Um, and to think that that fish stocks are being depleted by the small, small number of sea lions that we now have on the mainland of New Zealand, um, I think it's just nonsensical. Too little is still known about these sea lions, 
especially here on the mainland. Otago University supports Sean's unpaid research. They allow him use of their lab to analyse his video footage. Here we've got an animal called Mr Green. He has a scar in his cheek here. Um, probably got through fighting for territory sometime in the breeding season. All right, now here we've got a much younger animal, uh, probably only about one and a half years old, which means it'll be a relatively recent arrival. Uh, now one of the problems that we, we've got about a hundred animals to compare with, that often the younger animals don't have any scars at all. Uh, so particularly with animals like pups, which we try and follow very closely, to identify them we often have to tag them. <coughs> A team of scientists and dock workers will help Sean to tag the pups. They're found with mum in attendance. She was once tagged herself. Tagging was delayed this year to allow Miley to finish her research. This means larger pups, which are more dangerous to handle than in previous years. The team chooses to tag Lorelei first. Their hope is that Mum's immediate concern will be for her son. The plan has worked. An ID tag is first placed on the flipper, then a tissue sample is snipped for a DNA record. Spray it. While the tagging has inflicted some pain on Lorelei, she has managed to repay the favour. Sean's thick leather gloves were no match for her sharp puppy teeth. To help avoid further injuries, they try a different tactic to catch Connor. The net works to control the pup, but mum is another matter. The tag should last for several years, long enough for the animals to develop natural markings of their own. As winter takes hold, the female sea lions desert both the beach and the pines. By now the pups will be old enough to accompany their mothers on their long ocean feeding trips. It's time that they learn to master the underwater world. Sean continues his normal survey work, but finds only males on the beaches. Although this is not unusual, the longer the females are absent, the greater is his concern. By early spring, many sea lions have moved to a beach popular with both local people and tourists. For many, the chance to get so close to a large wild animal is a unique experience. If sea lion numbers increase, such encounters will become far more common.
the potential for numbers to increase, I think, is quite real. The challenge, however, for New Zealanders is to be custodians of what is a national treasure. Well, the, the great thing about the sea lions here is that they are coming back and they're recovering on their own. Uh, and, and so therefore the emphasis for this colony to survive is going to be on people. So it's up to people to ensure uh, that these animals are protected, they're not harassed, uh, and they're allowed to continue on as they're doing now. Whatever has drawn the other sea lions to the area has also brought Mum and Connor. They've travelled far inland, perhaps seeking somewhere more secluded to rest. Sean is relieved to finally see them safe. Connor is Mum's seventh pup, and only time will tell how many more she might have. Mum's now getting on a bit. She's up to 15 years old. They've probably only lived for about 20 years, so she may only have a few more pups. But she's been our most consistent breeder so far, uh, and uh, once she goes, it's going to be up to her daughters to carry on her legacy. And Mum now also has granddaughters to carry on the legacy of mainland breeding. A few days later, one of those granddaughters is on the same beach. It is Lorelei, and her independent attitude has remained much the same. It seems she is yet again sneaking away from her mother, Leone. Lorelei is now the second generation of sea lions that have only ever known the mainland as their home. Where she will choose to settle to have her own pups may yet surprise us. This species prospects still lie in our hands and in our ability to accept their presence on our once empty beaches.